How do you associate initial velocity, final velocity, with an acceleration over time passed or distance traveled? In physics, we use a series of equations called the kinematic equations. The kinematic equations associate final, or initial velocity, which is vi, measured in meters per second, final velocity, vf, also measured in meters per second, the acceleration, a, in meters per second squared, the time unit squared, s squared, gives us the clue that we're dealing with an acceleration. Delta t is our change in time measured in seconds, and delta x is the displacement measured in meters. For kinematic problems, the first thing we want to do is always read the question carefully in context. This will help us to determine what the question is asking. We will then identify our knowns and our unknowns. We then must reconcile all our units. We then can determine which equation will best satisfy the needs of the problem and then plug in our values and chug out an answer. This chart will help us to identify which equation best satisfies the needs of the problem that is being asked. In each case, a pro the problem will give us certain variables and there will be one variable that we are not given any information about, nor will we be asked to find. That's where the no will fall on this chart, and wherever the no falls, that's the equation that best satisfies the problem at hand. So for the case of a, sh bus a shuttle bus coming to a stop in order to avoid hitting a dog as it slows from 9.0 meters per second to 0 0.0 meters per second, in a time frame of 1.5 seconds, we are asked to find the acceleration of the bus. So we identify 9.0 meters per second as our initial velocity, 0.0, .0 as our final velocity, and typically there are keywords that help us to identify initial versus final. The from is usually the initial, to is usually the final. This will take place in 1.50 seconds and we are being asked to find the acceleration. So we can list our variables, vi, vf, a, delta t, and delta x, as 9.0 meters per second for the initial velocity, 0.0, .0 meters per second for the final velocity. Acceleration is what we are being asked to find, a time frame of 1.50 seconds, and the no is for the displacement, which we are not given any information about, nor are we asked to find that. We can go to the formula page, and the delta x has a no for the equation vf equals vi plus a delta t. This is the equation we will best use when our information is, as outlined, 9 meters per second for initial velocity, 0 meters per second as the final velocity, acceleration is what we are looking for, and a time frame of 1.5 seconds. Using this equation, we will plug in the values and get 0.0, .0 meters per second equals 9 meters per second plus an acceleration times the 1.5 second time frame. Algebraically, we will eliminate the 9.0 from the right, moving it to the left, canceling it on the right. We get an equation of negative 9.0 meters per second equals acceleration times time 1.50 seconds. Dividing by the time, we can cancel the time on the right, and we get negative 9.0 meters per second divided by 1.5 seconds. This gives us a value of negative 6.0 meters per second squared. Notice that the acceleration is negative because the bus is slowing down. For the problem, if the average acceleration is negative 0.5 meters per second squared, we will identify this as our acceleration. How long will it take? Well, we underline the how long because that is the question. What is the time it will take for the cyclist to come to a stop if he is currently traveling at a velocity of 13.5 meters per second? So he is initially at 13.5 meters per second, but he's going to come to a stop, which means he's going to come to rest at 0.0, .0 meters per second. So therefore, our initial velocity is 13.5 meters per second. 
final velocity is zero meters per second. We are given an acceleration of negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Again, the cyclist is coming to rest, so he is slowing down. So he is decelerating, giving us a negative acceleration. Time is what we are looking for. And again, we're given no information about displacement, and we're not asked to find displacement. So we are going to use the same equation as we did before. Vf equals Vi plus A delta T. Plugging in our values, we get 0 meters per second plus 13.5 equals 13.5 meters per second plus the acceleration of negative 0.5 meters per second squared times the time. Algebraically, we eliminate the 13.5 meters per second from, from the right, moving it to the left, giving us an equation of negative 13.5 meters per second equals negative 0.5 meters per second squared times the time. We divide by the acceleration of negative 0 0.5 meters per second on both sides. This gives us a final value of 27 seconds for the time. Notice that the, final, the velocity and the acceleration are both negative. The two negatives cancel, giving us a positive time. Time can never be negative. If a car accelerates uniformly from rest to a speed of 23 kilometers per hour in 6.5 seconds, find the distance traveled in this time frame. So our initial velocity is from rest, so we're going to start at 0 meters per second. We're going to speed up to 23.5 kilometers per hour in a time frame of 6.5 seconds and find the distance traveled in this time frame. So we are looking for the delta x. So in this case, our initial velocity is from rest, 0 meters per second. Our final velocity right now is in kilometers per hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert that to meters per second. Now technically, you should take the kilometers per hour and multiply it by 1,000 meters and divide it by 3,600 seconds. But because you can cancel two zeros in both of those units, we only have to multiply by 10 and divide by 36. When we do this, we get a value of 6.39 meters per second. Our acceleration is the no value. Our time is 6.5 seconds. And our delta x is what we are looking for. Using the formula sheet and finding where the no is, we see that the no under acceleration is under the first equation, delta x equals 1 half, the quantity via i plus vf times delta t. So for this situation, we're actually going to use the equation that fits the data that we're given. 0 meters per second, 6.39 meters per second as the final velocity, no acceleration, 6.5 seconds of time, and displacement is what we're looking for. So in this case, we have delta x equals 1 half, the quantity vi plus vf delta t. Plugging in our values, we get an equation that looks like this. First, we must solve inside the parentheses, giving us delta x equals 1 half 6.39 times 6.5 seconds. And calculating that out, we get a delta x value of 20.77 meters. If an automobile with an initial speed of 4.3 meters per second accelerates at a rate of 3.0 meters per second squared, Find the displacement if the car travels for 5 seconds. So our initial velocity is 4.3 meters per second. Our rate of change or acceleration is 3.0 meters per second squared. We are being asked again to find the displacement, and we have a time unit of 5.0 seconds. So for this case, our VI is 4.3 meters per second. We have no information about the final velocity. We have an acceleration of 3.0 meters per second squared, a time frame of 5.0 seconds, <clears throat> and we are being asked to find the displacement. So when we go to our formula sheet, the VF no falls under the equation delta x equals VI delta t plus 1 half A delta t squared. So for this situation, we are going to use that equation because, once again, our values are 4.3 meters per second, and we don't have any information about the final velocity. 
we have an acceleration of 3.0 meters per second squared, a time of 5.0 seconds, and we are being asked to find the displacement. So our equation, delta x equals vi delta t plus one-half a delta t squared. Plugging in the values gives us this equation here. Now, what we want to note is for this last part of the equation, one-half 3.0 meters per second squared times five seconds, we are only going to square the five seconds. Taking the values, we end up with 4.3 times 5, giving us 21.5. And 1 half 3.0 times 5 squared gives us a value of 37.5. Calculating this, we get a change in x, or displacement, of 59 meters. For our last example, we have a boy sledding down a hill, accelerating at 1.4 meters per second squared. If he started at rest, how far would he need to travel to reach a speed of 7.0 meters per second? So our initial information tells us we have an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. He is starting from rest. He will travel how far? That's the question we're being asked. And he's going to reach a final velocity of 7 meters per second. So for this case, we have an initial velocity of 0 final velocity of 7, an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared, no information on the time, and we are going to look for our delta x. So the equation best suited for this is the vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Plugging in our values, we get 7.0 squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 1.40 meters per second squared, delta x. 49.0 49, uh, 49 meters squared second squared equals 2.8 meters per second squared, delta x. We will divide by the 2.8 on both sides, canceling the 2.8 on the right, giving us a final answer of 17.5 meters for our delta x. These are examples of kinematic equations.